Amongst today's forgotten 80s TV gems, we've got a swashbuckling Oliver Tobias, a very unlucky Simon Callow, a small round orange chap in an unreliable car, and rock star Sting in one of the most incomprehensible TV dramas ever. Let's start with what has been described by some as the worst British sitcom of all time, but is it really as bad as its reputation would suggest? Bottle boys, bottle boys, up with the lock. Who cares if it's raining? Who cares if it's dark? There's a whole lot of bottle boys taking a pride in making sure each customer is satisfied. Milk, eggs, and butter. Broadcast on ITV between September 1984 and August 1985, Bottle Boy starred perennially cheeky charmer Robin Asquith as Dave Deacon, a football mad milkman who works for Dawson's Dairies. Also along for the bawdy ride were the likes of Oscar James, who had just landed the role of Tony Carpenter in EastEnders, Eve Ferret as Secretary Sharon, and Welsh actor Richard Davis as dairy manager Stan. So, was Bottle Boys really that bad? Well, although it certainly could never be mistaken for a sophisticated comedy, the series does have a sort of bawdy charm, and if you're looking for a bit of an old-fashioned studio sitcom, then you might enjoy some of the episodes of Bottle Boys which exist here on YouTube. The series has never had an official DVD release. While Bottle Boys received a mainly negative reaction when first broadcast, Channel 4 sitcom Chance in a Million was very well received by both critics and audiences alike. However, despite its excellent reputation, the series is rarely mentioned today when talk turns to great TV comedies of the 1980s. Chance in a Million features highly inventive and very funny visual gags, the success of which are heightened by the superb performances of its two leads, Simon Callow and Brenda Blethyn. Better known for his dramatic stage work at the time, Chance in a Million allowed the highly talented Callow to show off his comedic skills in front of a national audience, while Brenda Blethyn also saw her screen career blossom with her role here. Broadcast for three series between 1984 and 1986, Chance in a Million is available on DVD and right here on YouTube. Created by the great Bob Block, the man behind children's television classics such as Rent-A-Ghost and Pardon My Genie, Galloping Galaxies was fairly unremarkable in comparison to those previous shows. However, it did feature one of the final performances of the one and only Kenneth Williams, who provided the voice of ship computer Sid. In true Kenneth Williams style, the sarcastic Sid would often put the crew of the spaceship Voyager in their place with acidic one-liners. Although a novelisation of the first series of Galloping Galaxies was released in 1987, this little-remembered children's sci-fi comedy has never been released on DVD. However, there are episodes here on YouTube.
Simple but highly effective, hugely enjoyable and very funny, Children's Cartoon Aubrey was first broadcast in 1981 and ran for 39 six minute episodes. Title character Aubrey, when not out having some kind of madcap adventure, could often be found hammering away in his shed constructing a fancy new contraption. With the memorable opening theme tune perfectly encapsulating the high energy adventures that lay ahead, each episode of Aubrey is a mini gem. If you've never seen Aubrey, I highly recommend seeking out available episodes here on YouTube. <laughs> Seventies and eighties heartthrob Oliver Tobias was always good value in swashbuckling adventure roles, and the 1981 series Smuggler is no exception. HTV Wales production, Smuggler saw Tobias in the role of Jack Vincent, a former British naval officer now turned smuggler, who regularly finds himself caught up in espionage wars between England and France. With the rugged Oliver Tobias buckling his swash at every opportunity, Smuggler is an entertaining old fashioned adventure of the type that sadly does not seem to get made anymore. A sequel series, Adventurer, was broadcast in 1987, with Tobias returning to the role of Jack Vincent. The full series of Smuggler is available on DVD, but copies are now a little difficult to find. Perhaps one of the most obscure series in today's list, Fantasy Thriller The One Game was broadcast over four episodes on ITV in 1988. Stephen Delane plays Nick Thorne, the owner of a high-tech games company who finds himself trapped in a deadly game by his former partner Magnus, played by the excellent Patrick Malahide, who is probably best known for his role as Inspector Chisholm in Minder. The concept of the one game is rumoured to have inspired the 1997 David Fincher film The Game. The one game is available on DVD. From 1980 to 1984, Jill Gascoigne enjoyed a highly successful run as Detective Inspector Maggie Forbes in the gritty crime series The Gentle Touch. In 1985, the character of Maggie Forbes, once more portrayed by Jill Gascoigne, returned in the more action oriented Cat's Eyes. Forbes is now part of the Covert Activities Thames section, a Home Office security team which also includes computer expert Fred Smith, portrayed by Leslie Ash, and team leader Prue, played by Rosalind Landor.
three-woman team concept inevitably saw Cat's Eyes dubbed as the British Charlie's Angels. This comparison heightened further by the presence of a male contact, here played by Don Warrington. Cat's Eyes proved popular enough with viewers to run for 30 episodes over three series, coming to an end in 1987. Episodes can be found right here on YouTube. Despite featuring a fine cast led by Tim Brooke Taylor, Diane Keane and Sheila Stiefel, BBC sitcom You Must Be The Husband, first broadcast in 1987, is almost completely forgotten today, a situation not helped by the series seemingly never getting repeated. Goody's legend Tim Brooke Taylor is Tom Hammond, a happily married man with a steady but unspectacular career in bathroom fittings. His life turns upside down when wife Alice, a budding writer, played by sitcom great Diane Keane, suddenly enjoys huge success with a sexy blockbuster novel, which leaves Tom to wonder where she found the inspiration for the steamier scenes. Sheila Stiefel is Alice's hard-nosed literary agent Miranda. With no DVD release and no episodes available online, You Must Be the Husband seems destined to languish forever in the forgotten section of the British TV comedy files. Broadcast on ITV from 1986 to 1987, sitcom All at Number 20 starred the always excellent Maureen Lippman as Sheila Haddon, a widow who decides to take in lodgers to make ends meet. Over the two series, All at Number 20 featured a fine supporting cast, which included Gary Waldhorn and Gabrielle Glaister in Series 1, and Carol Hawkins in Series 2. Most notably, appearing in both series, was Martin Clunes, in what was just his second regular sitcom role after No Place Like Home. Where am I? You're in bed. Oh, yes. What are you doing in here? I'm in bed with you. Mum! Oh, my God, I've been sleepwalking. I'm so sorry. No, no, we're in your bed. Mum, if you want me, I'm in Henry's room. No, you're not. Get out. Mind your knee. Ow! You can't. She can't find you in here. I lose my room. Mum, where are you? What's going on in here? Nothing. I, I was revising, and Monica was helping me with my anatomy. No. Uh, histology, not anatomy. There wasn't any room in your bed, so I'm coming in here from now on. It's all right. I've got my pajama trousers. I haven't. Come. Yes, I'm sorry. Not you, Monica. Come on, this man's got an exam and no trousers. Oh, you don't take me seriously as a woman. Yeah, well, there's a yellow rose. The text is coming out of your mattress. And, oh, oh, what's going on? Oh, I think it's musical beds. Oh, they look like babes in the woods. Yeah, so you cover them in leaves. I'm going to make breakfast. <laughs> All at number 20 was one of those unremarkable but enjoyable, easy-to-watch sitcoms which ITV seemed to specialise in during this time period. Finding the DVD of All at Number 20 is now not an easy task. Angels, trolley buses, slave camps, jellyfish. What the heck was Artemis 81 all about? Answers on a postcard, please. Broadcast on BBC One on the 29th of December 1981 and running for three hours, Artemis 81 was a fantasy piece high on symbolism and low on explanation. Starring Hal Bennett as fantasy writer Gideon Harlax, the one-off drama seemingly centred on the battle for the future of Earth between an angel of light and an angel of death, I think. In one of his early acting roles, rock legend Sting portrayed Helith, the angel of light who went up against the evil Azrael. A contender for most baffling piece of television ever, Artemis 81 was released on DVD, but copies are now as obscure as the film itself. You may possibly need a drink after watching that Sting one. Which of the shows mentioned today do you remember watching back in the 80s? Do you have a favourite amongst them, or maybe you've tried to block one from your memory? Do please let me know in the comments. As always, many thanks for watching, and do join me next time for more nostalgic goodness.